playing the English hymn, you want to strive for a very legato style. Now, what does legato style really mean? In general, it means very smooth and very connective. So, some things to keep in mind while you're working towards that style. You need to make sure that your air it almost never stops. You need to make sure that that air is very consistently delivered from control of the abdominal muscles. A second thing is that you need to feel like you are making the lightest touch on the reed as possible. I like to think about the act of releasing the reed, but in general it's if this is the reed and this is my tongue, I'm thinking of knee. N-E-E -E, or knee as in on your body. Think of knee and notice how the tip of your tongue releases the roof of your mouth with knee. That's the kind of touch I'm looking for with the reed. Something you can try to do to work on this legato style is first off playing it all slurred and then when you go back and add the legato articulation see if you are using your air in exactly the same way. See if you can hear yourself playing as smoothly between the notes as possible and checking to make sure that your tongue does not upset the flow of the musical line. By now, you have probably heard a number of saxophonists using vibrato in their playing, and maybe some of you are already using it in your playing as well. Well, the subject of vibrato really needs to take up an entire different video, let me just give you a couple thoughts about it, and I'll leave it at that. Vibrato isn't something that we just simply add to a note in order to try to make it more interesting. The vibrato is really there to intensify the melodic line and carry the melody forward. Maybe you want to think about equating vibrato to a crescendo. I'm going to play the first four measures of the English hymn, and I'm going to play that without vibrato. And what I want you to listen for is when I'm playing a longer note than an eighth note, I'm not going to use vibrato, but I want you to listen for the subtle crescendo that I put in with my air that is helping carry the melody forward. I'm essentially directing the listener to the direction that I am going. Now, I'm going to go back and on those same long notes, along with my crescendo, I'll add a little bit of the vibration. And hopefully you can hear how those two things work together. This allegretto excerpt has a few different styles and combinations of articulation that we need to play. One thing that you need to keep in mind about any kind of articulation, no matter what your tongue is doing, you should almost never stop your air. The air is the most important thing. Now one of the things we can do to work towards the staccato style of this piece is first off verify our air. Let's play some of the beginning of this all slurred, making sure that our air is consistent and our fingers are coordinated.
next step is that we want to try to add a very light legato touch to all of the articulated notes in this same passage. Now that I've checked my air, let me check with my tongue. And as I mentioned previously, I'm going to try to have the lightest touch. Touch the reed, release the reed with a knee articulation. I'm listening to make sure that my air goes between the notes, and I'm striving to have a very clean motion of my tongue. Now, let's get on to staccato here. And what exactly does staccato mean? A variety of definitions that we have for that. We can talk about it being separated notes. We can talk about half value notes. All of these things mean that we need to have some amount of silence between the notes. The way that we're going to do that without stopping our air is that we are going to return to the reed more quickly and we're actually going to stay there for a longer period of time than we would while we're playing legato articulation. So let me repeat that. We're going to return to the reed and stay there for just a little bit longer. That is what is going to make the space between the notes. So let's experiment with that on a single pitch. Let's use B as a very nice non-resistant note. And so I want you to think about that as being neat. N-E-A-T, the word neat. We have the N release of the reed, and then we have the T ending, which is what helps us bring our tongue back to the reed. What does that sound like? I'm trying to return to the reed and keep my tongue there and keep my air going. If I was going to see what that was like without my saxophone, I might do something like poke myself down in my stomach where I can feel that my abdominal muscles are continuing a downward and outward pressure, which is what helps me keep make sure that my air is continuing to flow forward. And then with my tongue, I'm feeling my tongue snapping back to the roof of my mouth. If you say neat, but do it with this air sound, you can feel the tongue release the roof of your mouth and then snap back up there in that hard palate area, pretty close to the up behind the fr your front teeth. <laughs> Try a couple of those and then do it while you're poking yourself in your stomach. Take a big breath <sighs> and you should feel that this area, your abdominal area, is the same. You shouldn't feel it go bounce, bounce, bounce with each that happens. So you're essentially setting your air in motion and then your tongue is kind of parceling that air out a little bit at a time. Let's go back to the horn. Okay, now let's try to do that with the first line of music here. talked about the legato style, we've talked about the staccato style. Now, last but not least, the combination of slur two and tongue two. In our music, at the end of the third line, we have one of our first combinations of slur two and tongue two. Third line, last measure. Let's look at that and what you're going to do after the second note or the note you are slurring into, that is the one that you want to stop the vibration to create some space. And then you'd play the final two staccato notes in the way that we just discussed. One of the ways you can feel how to do that in your mouth is we use little syllabic things that are kind of fun. So repeat after me. Da, what, dut, dut. All right? Now, you're not going to do that while the saxophone is in your mouth because it gets in the way of your embouchure, but we can feel how our tongue is operating when we say that. Da, what, dut, dut. You notice how the what and dut, dut, those all three have T endings, which 
helps remind your tongue that it needs to snap back. What if you do that with air and tongue sound? Da, what, dut, dut. Try to approximate that now. You feel that second note is the what, and you feel, you feel how your tongue will snap back. Now, how is that going to feel on the saxophone? I hope that these tips will help as you prepare your music this year. For lots more information, check out my video about saxophone voicing. Thanks for watching.